Hey all, and welcome to another Top 5. And today we are talking, it's going to be a tough title to say, <laughs> Top 5 Superhero Costume Adaptations. Yep. Alright. It's complicated. I'm looking forward to typing that a lot of times when I'm <laughs> doing all the server stuff. But basically what this is, is, so they got the superheroes in the comic books, and they look awesome in their yellow and blue suits, and then they adapt them into a movie, and they're all in black, and they just have claws and cool hair. Well, we're talking <laughs> about those adaptations, and we're talking about our favorite ones. Mm-hmm. Um... And with me today, we have Jonathan. What's up? And we have Squeaks. Squeaks! Squeaks is our judge today, and I yes. am Frank, as usual. And uh, any kind of qualifiers you guys want to put in this? Is there anything you guys want to say? Not really. Um, think of. You, I don't I want to wait, because I don't want to say something, and you guys use it. Yeah. Or I can. One thing that's hard is we're going to be trying to describe them as best we can, but hopefully we can put pictures of all these on our... Yeah, you're making more work for me, so why don't you stop saying that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> on our Instagram. Instagram. We should put them on wow. our Instagram. I think it'll look yeah. better on Twitter. No, I think you should put them on our Instagram. <laughs> on, our, on our internet. Squeaks, Squeaks runs our Instagram, and I run the Twitter, so that tells you what's going on. Uh, in the future, we're going to be doing video versions of these. That'll be easy. Because we, we put them on Facebook. Or when we put them on YouTube, but that's just the audio. Mm-hmm. Um, but once we have the studio done, which is very, very close now, uh, we'll actually have a camera, and we'll be able to record we'll do this. We're going to put them on Twitch and on Facebook Live. But... That means that we could actually throw up pictures. So I'm really looking forward to that when we do like our worst of things. Yes. So we could do like our worst, you know, Catwoman costume and stuff like that, which that's easy. Um, okay, so let's get into oh, this. Which one though? Well, you say it's easy. Which one? Halle Berry. She looked terrible yeah, okay. as Catwoman. I, was say, I really like, which a lot of people probably might not like, I don't know, the one uh, from Batman, which one of those older Batmans Returns. and it's all stitched up. Yeah. Oh no, that's, that's the cool. best one. I was going to say that one's pretty yeah. badass, yeah. Yeah, that okay. is amazing. She, yeah. oh, she did such a good job of that movie. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Ooh, bring in video games. I'm a judge. I'm saying it. If you have a design, uh, outfit for a video game, maybe the Batman video games, bring it in. I didn't even do video games. I just did movies. I just now thought about it. Wait, did you just do movies? Yeah. Well, let's wait. We'll do video games as a separate okay. topic. Okay. Man, okay. write that down. Thank you. <laughs> superhero. Like, yeah, you're saying superhero. I would have brought it up. Because the Arkham. Oh, those are good ones. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you do your five, John? All right. My five will be Wolverine, Aquaman, Yandu from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I found a really good picture. And uh, Batman and Joker. But you gotta say which Batman and which Joker. Oh well, Ooh. the old comic book versions versus the most recent. Well, not the no, most no, recent. No, no, you gotta pick what Legend Batman Joker. and what Joker you were saying are the best adaptations. Oh, then I gotta yeah. spend a couple more hours doing research. <laughs> <laughs> now the, uh, the the best Batman is the new, uh, not Chris, is it Christian Bale or the Ben Affleck? But yeah, yeah, sorry, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck oh, is a pretty re- is pretty accurate adaptation, I'll say. Yeah, and the uh, the Heath Ledger Joker. No, it's that's the only joke of the matter. Yeah, no, all the other ones are <laughs> just mistakes. The, uh, Joker's, over, Joker's over, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of, uh... Jared Leto? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, the, um... Ah, oh, the Star Wars guy. Why oh, can't I think of him? Oh, boy. The Star Wars guy. You know, there's a lot of actors. But you know the one that plays Liam Joker. Neeson? Oh! oh uh, the voice of the Joker and all the... Yeah, animated. Mark Hamill. Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, it's a fantastic he was better than Joker. Him? That's hard because that almost doesn't count, but it's so good. I know. I'm bringing all the superheroes in. I don't know. I was thinking. <laughs> okay, so my five in no particular order. Deadpool 4 from the 2007 version. Judge Dredd. Eh? Mm. Oh, yeah. Batman from a Night, uh, Dark Knight Rises. And Iron Man, the first movie one. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. I don't remember Judge Dredd in the com- Like I don't remember what his comic character looks like. It looks exactly like he does in the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you're trying to find the most accurate no, adaptation? No, I'm not, but that's, I'm just telling you. Oh. That's what we, it, these are the best adaptations, so that we think the ones that best took the costume from the comic book and did what they could in real life. Um, so they don't have to necessarily be accurate, they just oh. have to be, you know. Okay. Cause but I do, do like to, Twist, Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you were picking Joker comic book cartoon to Jack Nicholson, I'm like, well, that Heath Ledger one was pretty deranged looking. Yeah, yeah the Heath, the, the Joker from... Well, I mean, it all depends. The Joker from the old shows was pretty accurate for those comic books, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is more clownish. Mm-hmm. Um, then the ones from the, the 90s, Joker, Jack Nicholson, was really accurate. But the Heath Ledger, I think, captures the person more. Yeah, the yeah. Different... Actually, it actually captures his personality better. Yeah, okay. A different version of the character that yeah, he's Yeah, and then the Jared Leto was just a bonfire that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah. whose idea was that. I don't know, but that person no, more, no longer works for WB. <laughs> Okay, so... Pretty, well, first, I'm pretty excited to see this new Joker with... Uh, oh, me too, man. Yeah, with yeah. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. And it's directed by um, Scorsese. Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. I mean, it looks like somebody who just snaps and Jokers out. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. Okay. All right, so um, let's go with Frank first. All right, for my number one, I'm going with Iron Man. Okay. The first Iron Man suit. Okay. First Iron Man movie. 
The reason this mo- this one's so important is because it's something we never thought could be done. Yeah, we saw something similar to it with the first Spider-Man movies, but this one really kind of <clears throat> showed what Marvel can do. This was Marvel's first outing as their own independent production company, and there this this set the, the tone for all Marvel movies. That costume to me was like I want to have that costume. Mm-hmm. We saw the, the the early mocks when he first gets out of the cave and stuff like that, and the one yeah. that couldn't handle going yeah. up high in space. But that one where he's actually fighting uh, Juggernaut with. No, not joking. Not whatever. whatever. Um, the his partner. Or yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was so amazing, and it really was like I love my favorite part of that costume was the little shoulder cannon the missiles that yeah, came yeah, out yeah. and took out the tank. Yeah, like that that scene right there was used for future Marvel movies forever. Like mm-hmm. this is what our standards are. Um, it was just so cool. He's able to fly the fact that's the speed of jets and stuff yeah. like that. It 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 opened up the animation the 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 mind of what comic book costumes mm-hmm. can look like. Mm-hmm. Like that was when we saw like. Oh, they don't just need to wear spandex and capes. Yeah. We could do the most crazy comic book characters now because we just nailed Iron Man, yeah. the hardest one to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With technology and all that, you just make it look like a CGI the person. Yeah. And then they did a really good job of doing like Robert Downey Jr.'s face like mm-hmm. in that small box. Like he actually yeah. records in just a small box. I do I do like how the camera and, how they did that. And that was such an an ingenious idea because it's not as taxing on Robert Downey Jr., mm-hmm. and we really get the vibe that we're there with Jarvis watching him. So mm-hmm. I just thought it was really well done. Um, I was going to say, does the suit, the suit have any use? That's a question I ask it for every suit, but of course that one does. Um, how effective is your suit compared to um, other villains? Like, what what's all the things you could do with the suit besides a little shoulder cannon and fly? So, yeah, okay, for that specific suit, because I'm mm-hmm. talking about that one specifically, yeah, yeah. it's the most li- it's the most one of the most limited suits. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has the pulse cannons. It has the chest cannon on mm-hmm. there. Um, and I, I'm probably not using the right terms, but yeah, yeah. Um, it has the, the rocket boost. It has... I'm trying to think of all the little things that it has. has life support, right? Has life support, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not that's, able to go into space quite yet, but he still has like he's able to go, yeah, and everything. Pretty cool. Yeah. That's one thing I like about that suit more than the other ones. Like, don't get me wrong, every Iron Man suit is awesome, and it's yeah. always cool when you see that they can do something new. The one in the yeah. uh, Infinity War, the way it had like those slides, he gives it on the side. Yeah, and shoot, that was yeah, really yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. But that suit, because it was so limiting, makes it a little extra special. Yeah. When you see like, because remember the boot like would like launch onto his foot like when you see them like launch on that way like it was kind of like and had that machine to come up and like assemble it around him yeah it wasn't the nanotech and stuff like that yet yeah. it was so much more almost kind of like if you think steampunky that way yeah. where it was like you still have a weakness yeah it was very rigid it was literally armor being bolted onto him yeah like that part about it it really kind of just it opened up your mind to like this is almost real yeah like this could almost happen it, it takes a just, lot of work to put it together but that's how it would go if it was yeah. put together so not it, like nanotechnology that assembles around him. It's, right, which is like, him. is awesome, but so unrealistic. Yeah. When this was like, man, how far away from, away from this, you know? Yeah, really. It just, it, it really opened your imagination. When you look at a cell phone, everything that's packed into that, you're like, well, yeah, of course his boots can have little rockets and then we got cell phones now. Like, yeah. There's so much that we can condense was, in the small packages. The, simple t- the simpleness of it, plus like, it's just, it was really mind opening. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, and John? That, and the energy oh. source keeps his heart from... It, yeah, but it's, it's like... It's not, keeping, the idea is that it's, Keeping the the fragments from the, the explosives yeah. uh, away from his heart, so they're yeah. constantly pulling away from them for them moving in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so all of that together is like his technology that's in, built into the suit and stuff like that. But it's not necessarily part of his like costume, right? It's right. It, visually it, it, is one way, but like it's all this advanced. Visually, that's too. another thing too. Visually, they did a really nice job because mm-hmm. it's all CGI, right? Yeah, they did a really nice job of showing the actual metal mm-hmm. aspect of it, the alloy aspect of it. There's slight, yeah, right. There's slight little dents and indentations. Yeah. And for so early on, this movie came out, came out pretty early. Mm-hmm. Um, that was some top notch CGI. And I think the fact that it was alloy actually made the CGI look better. Like it, it was in favor of them. Like when they like, sometimes we'll do something in the dark or in the rain. It's mm-hmm. kind of hide the CGI. It's why Godzilla was done in the rain. The, the 2000, the 2001 version or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or ninety eight maybe was all done in the rain so they could hide how bad the CGI was. That's literally why it was done that way because it was so early on the CGI days. Huh. Yeah. That's crazy. All right, John, your number one. All right, my number one's gonna have to be. It's hard. I always say this. Uh, I, I sit here and debate myself against my top five, <laughs> but I'm gonna go with the Heath Ledger's Joker. Okay. Oh, okay. you're killing me, okay. John. Like, come no, on, man. It's such a good one. I don't know why you put anything else up up against him. He kind of wins it all. But... <sighs> no. Um, did we say superhero, right? <laughs> no, we say comic book. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So, especially when you compare this to the old comic book Jokers, there's such a drastic change. And when you compare it to the earlier uh, movies, uh, because he used to just be like a, like trying to look more like a clown, 
right? Like his makeup was more like right. a clown, but more professional. That's the reason clean, the suit was purple, yeah. Clean cut businessman and stuff like that. This version of him was more sinister and kind of chaotic, but he still had the sharp, clean suit. It's just his makeup was smeared. The the he didn't just have red lipstick like um, what was the earlier Jack Nicholson? Jack Nicholson, yeah. yeah. He he had it smeared across his cheeks and scars, you know, because he'd been supposedly cut and stuff. His his hair is tattered and chaotic. So he's got this chaos, but it's all neatly, cleanly organized within this this purple and green business professional suit. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to say about that suit, how thrift store does that suit look? That's what I love about that yeah. suit. Yeah. It's yeah. like a suit that's that he true. got from his grandpa that had passed away a long time ago or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. It's a suit that he's had for a long time and he like lives in that suit, mm-hmm. but it is still a suit. Yeah. And we have to remember that, much like Batman, the Joker works with a lot of different gadgets. And so he keeps his little gas bombs and his tricks and stuff in his in the pockets yeah. of his well, suit. Well, that, that string that's attached to the... Yeah, the, the like, to the grenades bombs. that are like yeah, binding yeah. the inside. To me, whenever I think of a suit, it's always him opening that jacket. Yeah. He's got that string attached to it. It's just like yeah. that's that's he he's like got the it. really good job. Yeah, I mean, I got pictures over here too, but you, we'll have to yeah, post yeah. some pictures. Pictures help a lot. Yeah, on the uh, podcast, yeah. they're always yeah. good. <laughs> but uh, so to me, he's so he, his, that version of him is the the new iconic Joker because he has that mob boss professional chaos talk talk about the uh, if i don't, don't no, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. talk about the adaptation part of that though from the comic books to the live action how does why is that important why is that number one uh to me that's the best one because he he heath ledger himself changed the character so much in making this new version of himself so uh the old one the original joker was kind of it was crazy but he, more just like a, a bank robber or whatever you know he would would give you riddles and joke and laugh and poison people or use a knockout gas and stuff like that. But it was, it was more, but how's a costume? Cause we're talking about, we're talking about costumes here. Yeah. Not yeah. necessarily Heath, Heath, Heath Ledger's acting, which is hard to separate the two. Yeah. So his, his characters portrayed in his costume though. So yeah. because before it was all professional, except for just like, he looks like a clown, like clown makeup. This one, his, he looks professional you know, businessman, but his makeup is what shows you on the inside. Yeah. He's actually insane. He is That's true. psychotic. He's psychotic, but he's well chan- chan- channeled, well managed. I think it shows uh, how psychotic he is in the suit, though, because it's not so clean cut like the cartoons or comics yeah. or the old mm-hmm. ones. It's a little bit afraid of like, hey, yeah. it's nice, but it's all like, yeah, tattered up mm-hmm. and stuff. So it kind of just his, shows. His hair used to be gelled and his makeup was all one flat white. And here yeah. it's all smeared off and the red cheeks are, are you know, red. Makeup goes across his cheeks, and that's a big aspect too of the actual. It's it's considered part of the costume mm-hmm. is the actual scars on his face, which yeah. is a different part of just him smiling, having the makeup. Yeah, it, you know we've seen scars before, but they always just look like the like the lips are yeah. bent back a little bit yeah. more. He actually had like the cut scars, yeah. Yeah. which was something unique to that Joker, and I think is a best way to me. I'm not trying to argue for years, but I think this is important because it's it's really good character. Mm-hmm. Um, is a good way of adapting from a comic book that's. It's hard because you have to adapt an unrealistic comic book mm-hmm. into a realistic character. Mm-hmm. And that's the best way to show that you were damaged into always smiling. Yeah. If you look at the Jack Nicholson one, he just has a wider smile. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of, that's doesn't bring you into the real life. That's, that's you know, so this adaptation, when they're trying to go more realistic, that's what Christopher Nolan wanted. Mm-hmm. The idea that cut into him, that they're scars, that's realistic and would feed into his insanity. Yeah. So... Now, uh, since I asked Frank about, I mean, he brought it up a little bit, like the grenade jacket string, what you mm-hmm. call it. Mm-hmm. Would you say he had any other uses of the costume when it comes to? Hmm. Being so he does. He does hide his gadgets and booby traps yeah. and stuff in it, but mostly it conveys power. He's not just out there like some gangster who's going to be, you know, telling his little gang yeah. dudes to go out and rob people or whatever. He is a mob boss. He mm-hmm. is in charge of all of the mobs in the city in gotham so he commands power with it even though he looks crazy and he shows you like yeah i'll you know stab you in the ear and your underling is going to take your place kind of thing or i'll show you my pencil trick Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) at the same time he's you know business and professional yeah yeah like and the the green and purple the whole color contrast is it makes him look awesome oh yeah i want to get one of those suits in me (laughs) oh man okay this is a tough one for you. I don't envy you right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. There's one thing that might pick one over the other, but I'm kind of scared to say it. Well, well, if you have any more questions, you got three more minutes. Um, 
No, I don't. What I what my what I'm feeling is that the Iron Man costume is dead on perfect to what it is right. in the comic books, and it does have more uses. The Joker one is, um, hey, we need a new Joker. How are we going to do it? And then they created the best. Well, as of, I think right now, until we see the Joaquin Phoenix one, right now the best Joker and how deranged and um, it looks. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> but how many other characters in? Well, this works both ways. But how many other characters like Iron Man have a tech suit that can do different things? There's the Valkyrie or whatever's name or uh, but you the could, Vulture. If you count oh, hit Joker's scars, I'm gonna count Iron Man's brain. So the, the key, well, the key thing that you got to think about, we're talking about adaptations. So I think the two difference here is that Iron Man is a way more, probably one of the most accurate adaptations yeah. in comic books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Joker is not accurate, but it is a reimagining that was needed. And that's what I was trying to find is the most changed from what the comic book looked like and we don't care for as much anymore. It doesn't match modern so yeah, you're seeing the images them taking the changes when they need to. Yeah, yeah. You'll see in the rest of my list. That's all I talk about. Well, that's well, that's <laughs> still very important. Like well, I was joking around about Wolverine, but that was one of the most famous ones where they did that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but see, in my my defense is they said like, look, this is something we would normally have to change, mm. but let's instead use new technology and really pioneer mm. how we use this technology to make it. But as the, accurate as possible. But the way Iron Man used and looked in the comic books, there wasn't anything that needed to be changed, right? No, they did. Well, that's the thing is, a robot but suit but, but they could. Them. But for general, I mean, look at look at Steel, the old Sha- Shaquille O'Neal movie, which yeah. I loved when I was a kid. <laughs> but that was basically like DC's version of Iron Man, a little bit, you know. Yeah. You had so they made that movie, making him a costume that looks god awful, yeah. looks terrible, especially if you look at it now. Yeah. But with Iron Man, they're like, we can't make that mess the mistake. We have to. Again, pioneer CGI, mm-hmm. really push the limits of CGI to make this costume as accurate as possible. So it's like they took your problem mm-hmm. and they said instead, let's try something different. Let's push our boundaries yeah. and try to make it accurate. Like it's hard because both these adaptations are good, but they're good in um, different reasons. I see what you're saying. They could have given him a physical suit of metal armor or whatever that was made from aluminum or made from metal and tell him walk around and act like this and we'll have a button you push and it flips your helmet up and right. that's it. But instead, they had to push the boundaries and, and change things. Make CGI. Or they would have to make it like four... So if they wanted to go your route, mm-hmm. they would have made it more steampunky or they would have made it more... Yeah. He built himself, but he's not an engineer, so right. it kind of sucks. If they're trying to make it more realistic and yeah. stuff like that. So the two different well, adaptations... Like his villain in the first movie. Exactly. Yeah. Or like even his first... When he gets out of the cave. Yeah. 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 So they, right. they, they're two different versions of how adaptations would work. Hmm. And it's all to squeeze the figure out which kind of yeah. looks. <laughs> Look at that right, so, so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> so I did like in your argument though, is because how many times do we see older superhero movies and we're like, oh man, that's not it. Like the first Mr. one I think Freeze. of is, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> one of them that I think of is which I thought was really good actually. Now that I get older and see it, was Spider Man One with Green Goblin. When I first saw it, and I was like, why is he like a robot looking suit and all that stuff? Yeah. I want my Green Goblin that I'm used to. But then when you get older, you're like, oh, that is kind of badass looking suit though. Yeah, and it's the best they can do without yeah. making it look terrible. I do mm-hmm. like how the Joker has switched to different things. Mm-hmm. So this one, I'm going with Iron Man. Okay. <laughs> That's switch hit. He's like, I was sorry, he, he did argue good, and Iron Man, when it came out, was revolutionary. Like It was a, it was, it was a yeah. huge change. Because when you saw Iron Man, you're like, then. dang, that's Iron Man from like everything we used to grew up on. Like yeah. That is Iron Man. Yeah. yeah, and it was something we've it never seen perfect. before, and it opened, yeah. it opened the doors to like, yeah. okay, now we can do Thor. Yeah. No, now we can do... So, yeah, it was pretty crazy. That was, a, right. that was a good one. That was, uh, yeah, that was more a difficult tough, than I thought. Another one was longer debates, but I think it was well worth it. Yeah. All right, Squeaks, who's next? All right, John, give me your number two. All right, my number two is going to be uh, Wolverine. All uh, right. I mean, it's like the newer Wolverine. My my favorite of the X-Men movies, I think, is uh, X2. I don't know why. It's just one of the better. It's, it's the it, one, it's uh, one that I watched. I know why. It's the best one. Yeah. I love X2. <laughs> I mean, I do like the newer, the, uh, I don't know the names. Isn't the, the Time of Future Past? Yeah, or the, the, the uh, first yeah. class edition. Like first, all the first class, class yeah, guys. There you yeah. go. One with the, the, with the younger version. Is number two the one where they go to the neighborhood and the juggernaut's there and the magnet is there and they're all waiting in the street? That is number three. Three. Number three, I like that scene. Number two number is where two. Magneto escapes from his prison with the with the steel balls. That scene, orbiting around John, him. you just nailed it. That I one, love that if scene. If I was to make a poster, boom, that's all you need. Everybody <laughs> yeah. else can die in the show. <laughs> that's terrible. That that jail cell is so awesome. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's the one where the Brotherhood really kicks in, and they have to team mm-hmm. up with the X Men to take out the guy. I can't remember his name for like me right now. But the one that put the uh, aluminium 
Oh, um, uh, in Wolverine's vibranium. Bones. Vibranium. No, not aluminum. That's not it? No, that's, that's, a, a, that's a, well, Captain it's not Man's, aluminum. Captain so. America. <laughs> Captain Man. Oh my God, we're losing all of our <laughs> geek cards. America. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah. So you know uh, what Captain yeah. Man, Captain Man uses <laughs> unobtainium to. <laughs> yeah. What did Dang, he put in his still? bones? It's oh, man, people are aluminium or not aluminium? Oh wow, we're terrible. Wow. Adamant? No. Oh, I thought it was vibranium. I thought it was the same no, stuff. That no, 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 it's a difference. I'm so it. sorry. There's so many people yelling in the middle of a grocery <laughs> store while they walk around listening to a podcast. <laughs> they got your headphones. There's kids around you that are crying. Yeah. Uh, I do that all the time. I'll be walking in Walmart. Yeah, you're right. Aluminium. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be walking around like Walmart not, listening to a funny aluminium. podcast. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm British. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry. Okay. Uh, now what Wolverine are we talking we're about? We're starting oh. your timer now. I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, I'm preparing the, the newer X2 Wolverine. Yeah, with the black, that's the leather suit. Black right? leather, yeah, okay. and, his, and his hair making the the okay. wolf. Okay. Uh, what do you call his ears? I guess. Yeah. Uh, so his older costume was we all remember the yellow tights with the the buckle and the the black ears that's and everything. Is classic. Very yeah, very classic. But if you imagine that in live action, if they I would put love that in that. the movie. <laughs> no, but it would not translate well. That it wouldn't would, look yeah. so it wouldn't be to the broad audience. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't look so weird. So I think they did a, a perfect job by putting him in the black leather because they depict him as that rugged, smoking a cigar, driving a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. You know, he lives he's immortal, lives forever, so he's been tossed around through, you know, some crazy adventures in his life and is beat down, but that's like his uh that fits his character really well mm-hmm. the whole black leather suit mm-hmm. so uh there's not a lot to it it's just i mean boots and i think he just wears blue jeans actually in the leather jacket well that's that's before, that's the, that's classic mm-hmm. logan mm-hmm. yeah but when he's actually he so one thing i'll just throw yeah, in there there's a little up, detail on that suit that's important mm-hmm. is it still follows all the lines of the red the yellow and blue suit it's just the stitching if you pay attention mm-hmm. the black suit he's in all the stitching is actually accurate to the actual blue and yellow lines it's yeah. just that they're not colored. Yeah. So the suit still looks the same. It's just the stitching. Huh. And what's cool is all the X-Men match really nicely like they do. With the, you know. So, yeah. Okay. It, I was thinking, too, like when you're saying like the blue and yellow and how that wouldn't work. Yeah. You know what movie that that kind of suit would look really good in is Mystery Men. Like how they're all like yes. super colorful, crazy <laughs> suits. That's a good movie. That would have been... I love Mystery Men. Yeah, that would have been really funny in Mystery Men. All right. So my number two will be... Okay, so I gotta be, I'm gotta. i going to have to go with Thor. Yeah. I'm going to go with Thor from the first movie because this is... A, first off, it's one of my favorite superhero kids uh, when growing up when I was a kid. Um, I really liked the Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and he's not Greek mythology, but he's, you know, yeah. he's part of the, the old mythologies. Um, I just really like him. And, and I thought, like, this suit can't... This guy can't be made. And again, Iron Man kind of ushered the idea, like, we could push the boundaries on this. Yeah. So then they did the suit where they kind of, like, showed, like, the metal rivets here and there. The red cape, the way they mounted the red cape, where it kind of like went over his shoulders and then down, yeah, kind of showed like regalness, which he is the prince and, and suit future to, king. It has to be supported by his breastplate, I think. Right, it's attached to it. Yeah, it's like actually like kind of like yeah, it's like locks so that's in. Practical, not like Superman who would just be choked by it all day. Yeah, and so in the way they showed like attaching to him is it was kind of like done like like magic puts the suit on suit on, which is fair because he's you know he's a god. Um, and then of course part of his suit is the is the hammer, which he thought like how are they going to portray. Mjolnir in in the movies like this doesn't seem like a movie a hammer he throws around and he flies with sounds dumb on yeah. paper and they no way they can make that in movies but then they bust it out in the movies and he did an excellent job the fight scene with when he's on the frost giant planet yeah. and he's throwing the hammer around you're like oh man they actually pulled this off <laughs> they nailed it yeah to me I didn't think it was something they could do they I thought he would look silly because one key thing is in the movies they didn't show the helmet hardly at all yeah, yeah. and That's it wasn't true. until Thor Ragnarok they brought like a really cool version of the helmet in because I was looking at comparisons too and his he looked they did a really good job of making him look identical to the comic books they just the way they the little details and the way they made yeah. you know the like you're saying the metal class shiny and stuff like it all turned out really well <laughs> I was trying to find ones that were the most different from from the old yeah, comics yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that we kind of went with different routes on this because yeah. now we get to debate that part but yeah um, man, yeah and, and I think the helmet was just something they just really couldn't make land you know yeah but I think the rest of it, they there was a lot of subtleties mm-hmm. that reminded you of the old comic book. It's yeah. where it was enough. Yeah, it was enough. Yeah. yeah. Dang, I don't really have questions for these ones because I kind of have a decision already. Oh man. And it's uh. I'm sorry, I... five minute timer, so make sure you drag this <laughs> oh, out. No, man. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to drag this one out now. I do have to say the Wolverine outfit. Mm-hmm. I hated those leather suits. Oh, really? what? there's no, no use for them. There's no whatever. Design's boring. It's just there's nothing to it. Everyone's just it's in black practical. leather suits. If you're wearing tights and you're fighting. They're gonna get torn. Everyone's just in black leather suits. There's no color to it. There's there's nothing. 
There's nothing. Not even like leather an adaptation to it. Because I pulled up the suit. I looked at it. And I was like, I don't see what you were saying okay. about the stitching or whatever. Yeah. I, I just it's very, it. very super subtle, yeah. yeah. The Thor one is dead on. Yeah. Like, damn, you pull that up yeah. and that's Thor. Yeah. Like, I know I'd say that it, about the but Iron it Man does, one, too. That's one thing I love about it is it, it is it The cape is, is, is perfect, like you said, because it kind of comes up a little yeah. bit. Um, and the first one, he does have the chain, or I don't know, it's not chain mail, but the, his sleeve's it's, done just like the comic books. Yeah. Um, they made him beefy, beefy like Thor a little bit. Um, they got Chris Hemsworth, which is already pretty buff already, so it just yeah. matches the outfit. The long hair is per, I mean, perfect. Um, I, he's just, he's just awesome looking. He is, yeah. So I had to go with that one. I, I just don't, I think I'm just so anti, uh, X-Men lately. I just don't, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. What are they I'm doing? So happy Disney bought them. I'm so happy. I'm hoping Disney, like, okay, let's just cancel. Yeah, but what are they going to do with that I want Jean to, Grey? Well, I want them to I'm wait, gonna... wait, give us like, Five years. Five years to kind of forget X Men. Yeah, like then, Hulk did. <laughs> then bring them back. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know. Um, um but yeah. Um, I just don't see anything practical with the leather suits. I just saw like oh, this art design go out there. I so, think I think Disney will just continue like to use them for a teen, like young adult no, franchise. Yeah, I, I think they're gonna when you them. watch in yeah. the, when you watch interviews with uh-huh. some of the the guys that are behind the scenes, the the brothers and stuff like that, they. They're chomping at the bit to dig into the X Men. Really? They're like, "Oh my god, this opened up." Because I mean, X Men can arguably say it's half of Marvel, yeah. just because they have so much galactic yeah. properties. And yeah. They got they got Fantastic Four out of the deal too. Yeah. So I mean, it really there's a little bit of a caveat with them, but not by much. Um, so that just opens up so much things, and I really like Fantastic Four, and I'm really looking forward to them totally deleting the last movie off the yeah, servers. Start all over. But yeah, man, that movie's so bad. But yeah, um, but yeah, what do you think about the Jean Grey movie though? I saw we saw a, we saw a picture of um, um, Sansa just standing there. Like, that's, a, right. that's the only reason I might watch it because of Sansa. I, I'm yeah. just totally not excited about them at all. Anymore. I'm not excited for X Men anymore. I'm the just last, like, I don't the know last what's good X Men. I don't care anymore. Old Man Logan. I mean, it was Logan. It was that was the last good X Men. Yeah, yeah. Because they took a chance. Yeah, they took the Deadpool model of keeping it small budget and awesome. Yeah. And they did it. You know? Yeah. Because that last X Men, I never thought I would fall asleep in the middle of it. But I'm like, man, this is so boring. Yeah. Uh, anyway, You're just not missing those characters at all anymore. Yeah, me neither. All right, uh, number three, let's go, John. All right, so my number three is going to be Yandu. And again, this is me comparing I versus right now. versus uh, old characters. I'll show you and we'll post no, you it. Know, you no, know it's old, not that. You know I, just old hear, I just want to hear Joker again, that's all. <laughs> I know, he brought Joker up again. <laughs> I, know. Oh, yes, I really surprised yes. that wasn't number two. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> had your chance. I don't No, that John. needs to come back up. I'm just <laughs> saying, bring that back up. I don't like Princess Diana. <laughs> do you know what the old Yandu, before you show him, do you know what the old Yandu looks like? No, let me see. Oh, yeah, I've never seen him in comic books He was a main Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, damn. So if you, since you all can't see... Uh, you all know Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy as the like red leather suit and uh, all the like gear and buckles and all this cool stuff and he's all blue and he's got a big red fin. His fin in the movie controls is what he uses to control his arrow yeah. that he can clean up house with pretty much. Coolest ability. The old comic book Yondu didn't have that magical arrow. He just had a red mohawk and he, he shot arrows with a bow and arrow. Yeah. Did he command those arrows too? I think later on he was able to, yeah. Oh, okay. So in the picture that I'm looking at. And so all he's wearing is a red Speedo and red boots and one arm is red and the rest of him is just blue skin and, and like a, you know, buckles and stuff. But it's very, very simple and would look terrible if they tried to put he, that in. He a, was much in more of like in, influenced by like Native American culture back then. Uh, and and it, like to, to talk about, and he's actually part of the original Guardians of the Galaxy crew. Yeah. Like the Guardians of the Galaxy, you guys know in the movies, that was not the Guardians of the Galaxy when uh, they first came out. Yeah. He was one of the originals. Uh-huh. Um, actually, so Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Steven Stallone's crew uh-huh. is the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, because they were, characters. what was their name? They weren't Guardians of the Galaxy, were they? No, they, they were, I think else? they were the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, okay. In the movie, they might have said something different, but the original crew was that actual, those mm-hmm. characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of funny because they actually use good actors for those small roles in the number yeah, two. Yeah, Miley so Cyrus nice. is one of the robots. So yeah, I know, right? So they might try to feed those ones in later on? They said they're going to actually use them in the other movies. They're going to be cool. used in like Iron Man movies and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Because they're the original Guardians. Um, yeah. But, I, yeah. Well, I'm just saying that what and, and so he was. It, they ended up reimagining the character completely for yeah. the new movies, yeah. Because because again, you can see right there he has very Native American influences, yeah, and stuff like that. The mohawk and stuff like that. So even the scaling down of the mohawk, because the mohawk is actually just a flat mohawk in the first movie, and then they put the little ledge on it in the sequel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say the the suit doesn't really have so much use for it, but he does look awesome. I love that outfit on him. Mm-hmm. I love the long jacket with the boots and everything. It's I much like more space pirate. Yeah. He looks, yeah, like Which a scavenger. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He fits the character's role really well with that. 
costume. And that, that arrow is so cool. I yeah. love yeah. that ability. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's almost cheating, though. He has too much power with that arrow to be able to just whip back and forth through but, him. And... But yet, it's super simple. He's just whistling to his arrow. Yeah. And, but that's, that's one thing I love, like the scene where he's like walking around and he's like, he's yeah. cleaning up he's his own ship. He's like, everybody in the ship. He's just like, he's like just strolling, whistling, and it's like, doo, 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 doo. Yeah. I mean, it's. That's so cool. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. handle that power because I don't know how to whistle. I lost my whistling abilities because I haven't done it so long. Yeah. <laughs> you're like whistling, then you like have a cough, or whatever. And you're just like, oh, no, my kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <true. laughs> right. uh, Frank, number three. <laughs> All right, John. I really like y'all, but I'm about to shoot him out of the water because uh-huh. I'm talking Dark Knight Rises bat suit. This bat suit to oh, me was my yeah. my favorite one because it brought in. It's so funny because it's something that you won't think of until you actually pay attention. Uh, which one is uh, the Dark Knight? Which one is that one? It's the, it's the sequel. Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Maybe it's... Actually, I'm thinking Dark Knight. So it, but the suit Dark Knight's uh, the, the one Joker with the Ledger. Yeah, so yeah, we'll go with the Dark Knight suit the, because that's actually the one that introduces it. Yeah. The key to this, this suit is every Batman suit before this, the helmet, the cowl was attached to the shoulders. Yeah, had a so, neck. So pay attention. I'm about to ruin Batman movies for you guys. <laughs> Watch even the first Christopher Nolan Batman, Batman Begins, pay attention. When Batman turns his head, he turns the whole shoulders. He turns his whole upper body. <laughs> and that's why my mic is going out because you guys can't see it. No. Um, so that was something that was really interesting. You don't pay attention until you notice that they changed it. The new Batman suit actually detaches the head and there's a little bit of a change to where he's able to actually move the head. Yeah. That gives the actor much a lot more freedom. Mm-hmm. Sorry about my minute. Sorry about that. Um <laughs> So he has a scene there that they could stab through, but it like overlaps or hind- or pivots. Morgan Freeman, you know, he actually mentions that. He says, well, this one, you know, a little more vulnerable, but she gives you more freedom. Yeah. And they actually joke around about that. But it's mm. something that like Michael Keaton had a problem with it. And Michael Keaton's probably the biggest example where it just goes right from head to shoulders. Like, mm. you know, and, and, like shampoo. It's just boom, head to shoulders. Um, and then, so this was a real revolutionary time. He also, it, it was much more practical. The, the utility belt was something that, like, you could see in the futuristic military. Mm-hmm. The whole suit was a, an attempt for, uh, Wayne Foundation or Wayne Company to provide military outfits and stuff like that. The, um, so the suit was built out of a bunch of prototypes that the Wayne Company was making for the military and for spelunking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it was just too expensive and they put it together to make the Batman, co- Batman suit. And the, the key to me was the fact that it revolutionized Batman's head movement. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing of bringing a realistic suit, seeing how Batman, a very rich Bruce Wayne, could make a Batman outfit out of all these prototypes his company makes, mm-hmm. I thought was, what a great way to adapt from a comic book. Uh, you know, I just thought it was really, really well done. Yeah. That's one thing that's cool to think about, too, is, is like how he created that from technology that was too expensive to do in bulk. Yeah. Like, we don't want to arm every soldier with this kind of armor because it would just bankrupt the government. Right. But... If you just want to make one really good thing, you know, if you want to make a really cool kitchen sink or whatever, like there, I'm sure there's other materials that are way better to make that out of, yeah. but, or you anything. Like you can literally make it out of like diamond. Yeah. If you had the money to do exactly. it. Exactly. You know? So like, what would be more effective as armor than just regular metal plate like we use? And uh, yeah, oh, you busted it composites. out. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's like the 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 cape there. The cape uses electricity to kind of like become rigid so it can glide down. Like spawn. Yeah, um, hey, that's funny. That's something like, honorable mention. Yeah, honorable mention too. And then a, a really good example of his technology that that was just to, the ability to like sky hook when he, when he yeah. hooks onto the plane to go away. Was that part of his costume though? Well, it was a it was it was, it was something that he, it was a gadget. You're yeah. right. It was a gadget, but it was part of that Christopher Nolan version of Batman that was kind of yeah. like. Yeah, this is too expensive for the military to actually use. The CIA wanted to use it to get their operatives out. Yeah. But it's enough. It's just the right price for Batman to use. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And he had those, those blades on his uh, forearm that would... They actually could have shoot out. Shoot Good out. point. Yeah. 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 That was... <laughs> Not to defend your... <laughs> well, it, was, it, was like it's it was on my list, too. It was one of my favorites. They did a really good job in Batman Begins showing that that's actually like a piece of ancient martial arts that the that the League of Shadows uses mm-hmm. and then he was like well I could take this and then just modify it to where they can shoot out when I need to yeah. and when he's fighting Joker he actually deploys him at one point Yeah. so yeah good call good call thank you for helping me no I problem. appreciate yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> talking Batman yeah. you guys came at me like totally opposite though because I'm like okay if you were to do like John here is picking one it's like oh the movie looks better I'm like dang yeah Yondu looks way better yeah. uh, now than this and you came with like oh it looks exactly perfect to how it is so it's super <laughs> hard most of are, yeah. I know yeah, that's and it's funny. like if I had to pick from like you use of um, uh, design and the use of the outfit, Batman obviously wins it. Yeah. Oh, but it, I'll defend you a little bit. Yondo's reimagining, I think, saves that character. Because yeah. Yondo in the comic books, to me, I mean, Nobody there's cares. a reason he's not a big character anymore. Yeah. He's whatever. He's kind of boring. Yeah. But that, the, the scavenger, the space pirate version of Yondu, the one that becomes a pseudo-dad for 
as Star Lord, mm-hmm. that version of him looks amazing. The reason Batman's on my list is because I compare it to the original comics where he's in tights and spandex, yeah. t- you know, and uh, speedo or whatever too. Yeah. So that's yeah. another one where it's just like, yeah, it's a huge transition over the many years to evolve him to what we like more than you know mm-hmm. what, what seems more practical. More so applicable. you have Batman on your list, right? Yeah. Are you okay? So, so you, I, when I, you bring I, him up, we'll, we'll go further into Batman's costumes. Yeah, I think if anything, I could I could step down with the Andu and support Batman because he is on my list. I think I. It, well, if you want to do that, we have three minutes. Do you, are, what do you think? Oh, are you man. leaning like towards saying, Batman or Yondu? I was leaning towards Yondu, but it's like, <laughs> what are we, what are we debating here? And it's like, okay, we didn't, we, we got, didn't go down. For I know, much. yeah, really, we could, we really could have done two different lists, yeah. more accurate adaptations, and then yeah, dang, because I mean, Batman's dead on. I mean, well, besides the suit, I mean, the tights and whatever. Yeah. I'm like, dang, that's a new. But Batman. that was like, dead on for its time. Yeah. Well, like Wolverine too. I was comparing the new Wolverine versus the you know 50s yeah. or whatever, where he's yeah. in the yellow. Yeah, so, but I like the yellow ones. Well, the nineties Wolverine, <laughs> cartoon nineties yeah. Wolverine, so good. Yeah, I love that Wolverine. Uh, and he's short, and I'm short, so it's like, yay, props. <laughs> Thanks, short guys. Thanks, and then I don't know. I had like questions of like um, how effective like the suit is. Obviously, it's Batman does. Mm. I mean, does everything from a suit. Yeah, Yondu doesn't use mm. his suit to do. I mean, he no, uses. He just looks bad. If you count his fin as cool. part of his costume, his fin does help him control the arrow. Yeah, so his that kills everything. So yeah. Batman versus Yondu, what would happen? Uh, Batman, Batman beats Superman. Yondu is yeah. nothing. Superman's a chump. He you know he would. Weakness. You know you'd put out an EMP charge or something like that that would shut off that technology. Mm, but would it shut down all Batman's technology too? No, he uses EMPs in in Dark Knight Rises. Rises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of those two. One of those, <laughs> yeah, he uses the EMP gun. Remember yeah. while he's shooting at the God. I love those movies. Yeah, and without his arrow, Yondu is completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have to bring in the ship. You know? Yeah, his whole crew that turns on. Yeah. Um, man, I want to pick Yondu, but I can't. I have to pick Batman. You, you could pick Yondu. Uh, yeah, but if I pick Yondu, then okay. So my that's not my favorite Batman. So I'm kind of like okay, whatever. Oh, um, but it just yeah, makes there, more sense. If people are like, well, why are you picking Yondu or Batman? It doesn't make sense. There's other so, awesome Batmans. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Batman on this one. Well, let's okay. So uh, we got a couple great. minutes. Let's talk about yeah. the Batman costumes and all of their adaptations. Yeah. yeah. So this one I really like because of his reimagining of how he could move his head that was yeah. one big thing yeah. and it was part of the Batman Begins carry- carryover where it was these prototypes he's making mm. into the suit I like how you explained that he knows this is willingly sacrificing some of the security of the suit he knows yeah. that yeah there's a spot there if somebody gets a knife right in the right spot they could stab you in the neck he's like I understand that, but for me to be more effective and to save more people and do a better job, I need to be able to turn my head. Right. That's why they wore the plating instead, so they could do that. Yeah. And then you look at the the Batman from Batman for Superman, which of course nobody's a big fan of. But <laughs> I am. Yeah. You are. <laughs> well, that that Batman, Ben Affleck, I think did a really good job yeah. as Batman. But mm. that Batman was pulled from Frank Miller's Batman, mm. and I mean, talk about accurate Batman. That's I mean, perfect accurate mm. Batman. A um, little bulkier, a little heavier. Yeah. Uh, the costume's legit, a little older in age. Yeah. And and even when he goes into the Superman suit, like the actual, like the armor to fight Superman, that's accurate as heck too. Yeah. And it was just, it's a good version of him. It's another really good yeah. adaptation. And that's my favorite adaptation of the Batman, just because he looks, um, it's the more grittier suit. I yeah. Think it's kind of like marked up a little bit on the it symbol is. itself. Yeah, because he's a little, he's uh, been in there for a while. Yeah. I like that it, he didn't have to pretend his voice like the Christopher Nolan ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I glad like that. I like that it was just the technology of him just talking. And it's like, okay, that's cool because the other ones were getting annoying to where like his tongue is like uh, in a certain way. Like you could tell, like, oh, come on, man. Like, uh, whatever. <laughs> but I get it. That, that was his thing, though. <laughs> yeah. And it'll no. always be his thing. And that's, I mean, it's kind of like. The new Joker. I mean, nothing's going to touch Heath Ledger's Joker, and and um, Christian Bell's Joker is. I mean, Batman is like that mouth thing, and that's going to go down as kind of like a joke or a meme, but it's his thing. So, I never... be a good debate is Batman versus Iron Man, and they're different stages of their suits. Well, we might do. We have verses. We might. We're going to need to do another yeah. verses pretty soon. That did well. Yeah. yeah. Um, you but guys another... do those at random, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another uh, good Batman adaptation <laughs> that I wanted to talk about was the '90s Christian. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael Keaton Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a very important Batman costume because before then, action heroes were built strong and buff dudes. Mm-hmm. That was the first time where they're like, "Well, we'll just make padding that looks like like six pack on him. <laughs> we'll make it in the costume." Yeah. And Sylvester Stallone said that ruined action heroes. That Batman actually ruined the action movies. Mm. That's what Chris. So that's why he brought in the uh, Expendables because in retaliation to this. Mm-hmm. 
And it did. After that, you got things like Keanu Reeves is a superhero now. Yeah. I mean, like, who would have thought that? But it's because with the costume, you could really kind of manipulate the way they stand. And his was a trench coat. Mm-hmm. With that original Batman, they actually made him look strong through the suit itself. Yeah. So it was a very, it, they made a good actor who wasn't necessarily strong. Yeah. And they put him into a Batman suit that made him look like the role. So it kind of, yeah. it was a good adaptation in that sense, too. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to get a bunch of guys that look like John Claude Van Damme to yeah. play heroes when you have yeah. different characters you want to make. Yeah. And I then like there's it. the worst adaptation when they put nipples on the seat for George Clooney. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You remember why? that one? Why would they do that? I, it was such a bad idea. That was just that, that movie in general. Fire. We should just delete that from the list. I know. Even the Poison Ivy in that movie was just yeah. garbage. Yeah. And Mr. Freeze. I love Poison Ivy. Damn. Yeah, yeah, that's actually my favorite, favorite character. Uh, and favorite Bane. Female they have character. That, that terrible version of Bane in it, which I know is more comic book accurate, yeah. accurate but yeah. still, it's, it was... And that's that's another Terrible. thing is there's a lot of people who do not like the new Bane, Tom Hardy's Bane. Uh, they should change but, the name, maybe make him a different character. But they, I, like I love the character. character. I love the voice. They actually had to redo a lot of the voice work because it was too crazy before that voice. Really? <laughs> Could you imagine that that was the voice of they're like, all right, this is at least better. This is gonna scare kids, so let's tone it down a little bit. <laughs> well, he was just so wacky. Is the uh, problem? Okay. And so this voice, while a lot of people argue it was wacky, I mean, who has not done that voice uh, in their in, with amongst oh, their yeah, friends? I mean, it's just so iconic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Man, that, those ba- that Batman trilogy made. Uh, we were saying iconic a lot. Um, did do a lot of things with Christian Bell's voice, mm-hmm. Joker, Bane's voice now because everyone yeah. talks about it. Mm-hmm. Man, that even that was scare- crazy. People don't give Scarecrow enough shout out. You know, and I love Scarecrow. Scarecrow's my favorite. I have two favorite characters. So I have a female and a male. And Scarecrow's my favorite Batman male mm-hmm. villain, and then I got Poison Ivy for my female. I love those two. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I don't give a lot of credit for. Well, and the first one was cool because he let out all that gas. Yeah. But I guess my favorite version of Scarecrow would be the first Arkham Knight. Or Arkham Asylum game. Oh my god! Just so, so twisted, good at that, dude. super skinny, and just super deranged. Like talk well, about like a crazy version of Joker, but it's like the Scarecrow one. Like oh my gosh, he had his own levels too in that game. Yeah, yeah. There were some of the best. Ar- yeah. I, and I think I maybe mentioned this on the podcast before. There's a part where you're walking down the hallway in Arkham Asylum, and then the Arkham Asylum slowly change, and you're you've been hit with a gas, yeah, the yeah, Scarecrow yeah, yeah. gas, yeah. and it slowly changes into the alley where your parents were yeah, shot. Yeah, and I've I've gone down. I played that game. Finish it twice, mm. and I, both times I play that game, I go down the aisle, I see the change, and I kind of back up to try to to really absorb the transition. And how yeah. they did that, yeah. And that was my the artwork that goes into Batman. Sometimes is just wonderful. Yeah, you know. So. I know I was trying to bring up video games, but I have to with that Arkham. Well, yeah, we'll have to do a separate top five yeah. for that because I know Arkham needs. We should some pick some a good, good game, play it all, and then talk about our favorite parts of the game, like level up something that we need to be we <laughs> have to redo <laughs> our portal. Did we ever? Did we? We have to re-record it because it came out terrible. Oh, so we have to re-record man. it. I know, I know. Mm. I, gotta play, I gotta play the game all over again. I guess. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> Tell my wife I'm gonna be gone for a couple days. <laughs> yeah. All right, so back to mind. top five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we got Batman on the three. All right. Okay. So now we're going number, number four. four. I think I did you first. Learn, or do you want? How do you like it? Okay, Frank. Number four. <laughs> number four. I'm going Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. Okay. He is just doing the straight he is, accurate. He's trying to pick whatever he <laughs> well, likes the most. And, and I'm and I'm going with things that I have. I think have a little bit of ingenuity involved. Something that they're like, we can't pull this out of the comic books. And I, the, for Deadpool, first off, yeah, very accurate costume. Uh-huh. Uh, and it looks like you. Okay, yeah, I could see Deadpool like that in the real world. The key with Deadpool was the eyes. You know, people don't think about that, yeah. but those white eyes showing that on a suit was unheard of. Because how much did we freak out when Spider Man can move his eyes now? Yeah, not the the Tom Holland one. Well, what they did with that is they actually like CGI the eyes to move to show his. Because when the when eyes don't have pupils, it's much harder to show the emotion. personality, the emotion in it, right? Yeah. So they actually had the eyes bend and stuff like that based on his, what his reactions were, and it was something totally new and it was really worrisome at first. People yeah, like, oh, is it going to moving like the. This the material of his suit is moving as if it was his eyes, right? Right. Well, they, what they made that with the wide of the eyes, like to like lean in if he's like, you know, I'm doing hand yeah, gestures yeah. with my eyes to tell you this. I just the podcast. Yeah. yeah, the arch and change shape a little bit just yeah. to show yeah. emotion. Eyebrow muscles, whatever you want to call it. So that was that was something that was kind of new and, and interesting that they tried out, and then because of its success, they used it in Spider Man. Hmm. So Spider Man Homecoming, fantastic suit. Yeah. But I sure. think I think Deadpool suit is super accurate. Uh, it does get cut up with him, mm-hmm. and oh, it, it just it heals with him. Okay. It, no, but like no, when you see it get yeah. cut up, he oh. heals, but the suit you see is still cut up. Oh, okay. I really like when they do that. Mm. Um, and, 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 and like the katanas look solid on there. You see that the mounts for the katanas look realistic. Everything on that suit looks like he's just stepped right out of the comic books and into yeah. our world. And, and yet again, they took the chance of the eyes because that was something that, how are you going to do those eyes? Well, you do like Batman where they do the black makeup. 
Mm. And then do they show his, show his eyes? Which is cool, but then you got to think every time Batman goes out on fast action, like, one sec, I need my mascara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really think about that, but that's literally what Batman has to do to make yeah. that suit work. Yeah. Every Batman costume has the mascara around the eyes. Mm. When Deadpool, they tried something new, and, I mean, it nailed it. It was yeah. really good. Okay. I imagine he's, he's high tech. He's probably got a booth. He sticks his face in real quick. It blows him, blows Ooh, black paint on his face. He's yeah, closed right I mean, he's got to get ready fast. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't have time. Like, you know, my I was, wife He's in the car. He's like trying to steer the car with his knees while he's got the, the, the jet car. <laughs> yeah. And he's got his, his eyeliner in his eye. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> he crashes the Batmobile. <laughs> he's going to get to a crime scene I'm where sorry, only officer. one eye's done. Gordon, I apologize. I'm a wreck today. All right, John, number four. <laughs> All right, my number four, I think I'm going to bring back the Joker. He okay, plays Joker. Oh, dang, <laughs> yeah. okay. Yeah, so I know I, I've talked about him a lot before, but he's a clean-cut uh, purple and green business suit, but with his sinister-looking makeup, scarred-up mm. face, a crazy kind of washed-out green hair. Um, I think it all together makes and perfectly depicts the diversity of his character, mm. yeah. how he... he he is a businessman. He is his plan is crazy. His his goal is chaos, but he plans on reaching it by like he we've talked about other characters too, where they they make clear agreements of this is what I expect. You sign the contract. This is a clear deal. I'm gonna honor because I'm a businessman. Right. But if you don't go through with your your side of the the deal, then you know I'm gonna pull your skeleton out or I'm gonna you're, oh, <laughs> you're gonna watch your children you, burn or something. You stepped up pretty quick. <laughs> I mean, like he's, yeah. he's in it. He's, he's uh, psychotic, but yeah. he's psychotic with structure. I think his costume perfectly uh, portrays that and it shows him as a figure of power in the community with him being a mob boss and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, I like it. Yeah. I think you gotta talk more about those the scars and makeup when you, when you talk about because I think that's something that you're not talking enough about. But it's about. a new story yeah. every time, those scars. Yeah. yeah that's something. That, that's that yeah. true. That's, that's another thing. Okay, so... I, Anyways, if you don't mind if I like just do a step ahead. in real quick and again yeah. I don't want to defend your guy so much no. but you're bringing Joker Man. he's Ledger Joker of all things yeah, yeah. but I just want to bring in a story that I think is really important about that mm. uh, Michael Keaton who plays Alfred in those movies mm. had not seen his makeup in the scene where he's like oh the... Michael Keaton plays Alfred not Michael Keaton Michael Caine I'm sorry Michael okay. Caine okay. plays yeah. Alfred um, he had not seen Joker Heath Ledger in that makeup mm. before the scene where they where he comes in and like tries to get into Bruce Wayne's party he's throwing party oh, for, yeah, for yeah, yeah. yeah um so Michael Keaton actually had a line. Kane. Michael Kane, thank you. <laughs> actually had a line to say to Joker when he turned and saw him. Uh-huh. But he had not seen the makeup before. When he turned and saw the makeup, he was literally speechless. Yeah. Yeah, it actually affected Michael Kane and they kept it because they're like, that's the most truthful acting <laughs> ever. Michael Kane was legit scared of Heath Ledger when he first saw him. That's how good that makeup was. Hmm. Wow, yeah. I didn't even know that. The that's scars awesome. were right. legit. I mean they did they did such a good job on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I like it, like you mentioned, in 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 the character, every time he tries to explain the story of the scars, it's a different yeah. story. Yeah. It's more I mean so you never really know how did he get those and how messed up is his yeah. twisted childhood or whatever. So joker. Yeah. But he he's very compelling with the story, so I like it. Yeah. Um, I do like uh how now I'm saying like I I do like how we got a twist to it. Mm-hmm. Deadpool though it's so it's dead on for sure. Yeah, but uh, it's so crazy how we flipped out. Be like, what the heck? His eyes move. You know, his eyes move or whatever. Yeah. Just like the yeah. Spider Man, we were all freaking about it. Like, cool. But that's the only new technology that we got from. Yeah, Deadpool, otherwise it's whatever. subtle yeah. but yeah. used forever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is, is it's something? It's just like with the Iron Man suit. It was something we didn't think could be done beforehand. Yeah. We were always doing something different beforehand. Mm-hmm. They tried it, and yeah. really they didn't have the budget to, to mess with too much. I mean, this is really a chance for Fox, mm-hmm. and now they're just printing cash from it. Yeah, what Disney is now, yeah. but um. It was something new, and they, they said, let's try this thing out, and now they're able to use it on a big budget one, like like Spider-Man. with Spider-Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just think it was something that, and the, they, they try to stay accurate, they try to stay, they, they had to do so much with that movie, with mm-hmm. such a small budget. I hated that movie. I know you did. I know you did. I know, right? Oh, I know that fourth you... wall thing you don't like, huh? Yeah, yeah I yeah. hate that. Like, just I, I know. Is, you can't tell a story, and then just you break the fourth wall. Then okay, am, am I sitting on set? Like, there's no, uh, there's no point in watching a movie. I like, bite into that. I love meta uh, stuff. Yeah. I love when they go meta. Yeah. So in the whole storytelling adventure. <laughs> so I really thought they did a really good job with the costume, yeah. and then um, I think another part of the costume they did really good with yeah. is um, Wade's face because he has like the, oh, the scars. scars. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think I'm they did a nice job because in the comic books it can 
get pretty grotesque. Yeah. But they did a nice job of keeping Ryan Reynolds' looks still in there, you know? Mm-hmm. So you can kind of tell he's, he's still acting through that makeup. Yeah. But it looks really solid. It looks like it was something that's constantly damaged. Yeah. One yeah. thing I do like is I was going to try to trash talk because he's just wearing spandex. But that's actually perfect for his character because he heals through anything. If anything, maybe you can make the suit that heals like... Uh, who has that? One of the characters has that. Yeah. But um, that mends itself. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> totally different category. Um, but for him, yeah, he heals through it. So he needs something that's flexible. Like he could do karate flips and stuff and with it, the knot. You know, I want to say it's like... It doesn't it's, need to be I armor. think it might be leather, but it might be Kevlar. It's not just spandex. It's actually oh, okay. a material, and you could very much see the texture while you're yeah. moving around. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit something advanced. So yeah. pretty cool. And when you see him on set, that's Ryan Reynolds in that suit. It's not CGI'd. It's just, you know, so it's mm-hmm. a little bit old school. It's funny because Iron Man, I was saying the opposite. Like, it's cool that they didn't do that. Yeah. But with this, it's a little bit old school, a little bit just, it's a, just a good yeah. costume. Hmm. Yeah. Um, when you look at these, like on a poster, I think I remember in uh, your room. Oh, I have it. I can go grab it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the Joker's face, they're not his whole. Oh, yeah. Man. So it's like when you look at these, you're like, oh man, that's Deadpool. That's dead on to Deadpool. That's perfect. And then when you look at Joker, you're like, holy moly, what the heck is this? Like, mm-hmm. this uh, twisted. It's a whole, whole, um, whole new character. So with this, if I had it judged just on costume, because there's no uses for both of them really, mm-hmm. they're just straight up outfit. And yeah, you're talking about the technology with the eyes and stuff. But I'm going just costume, I'll have to go Joker. No, I, I, finally, because yeah. it's just like when you see that Joker, that new version of him, you're like, oh my gosh, what the heck? If you What's get to dress up as one of them for Halloween, I would want to be Joker every time. Everybody oh, yeah. was Joker after yeah. that movie. Oh, <laughs> I have to give it to you on that. I'll, I'll totally agree yeah. with that because as much as I love the Deadpool, and I think they did a really good job with it. Yeah, for sure. That was that Joker stepped out and you'd see it and like the suit was just a little bit too big for him. It kind of hung off of him a little yeah. bit. Like you're saying it's kind of like a thrift store thing. Yeah, and he, yeah. he almost had like a lean in so that it made sure to kind of hang off his shoulders a little more. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of Heath Ledger came through on that costume, but it was fantastic. Yeah. And I remember very well, those edges are frayed, and when he opened it up, it had like that lining that was such a weird green, mm-hmm. and then he had the bom- the grenades hanging in there. Yeah. Like, to me, that, and he had that string, remember when he, he had the string attached yeah. to that one bomb? tug on it. And he had, well, he had uh, the one time where he, um, the banker had the grenade in his mouth or hand or something like that, and then the string was going to a suit, he's walking away, and he's like unraveling the suit, <laughs> Yeah. and then while he gets into the bus, and then he closes the door, and it's, he does like, oh man, it, <laughs> That suit spoke a lot in that, yeah. in that scene right there. So yeah. it, was and it was hard to compare that suit to Iron Man, of course, because Iron Man obviously has all these unique features. Yeah. yeah. But it was yeah, kind of a little bit different to see it with Deadpool, because Deadpool is just a suit. Yeah. It's nothing you can't, yeah. you know, suit to suit. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. Batman would have been a good one to go against Iron Man with the high tech, the new yeah, Batman, yeah, so. that he, the suit that he uses against Superman. Oh, yeah, if you brought oh, up that yeah, one. Man. Yeah, that would be interesting. Never, but then yeah. you got Iron Man and his Hulkbuster, like, put those two head to head. Hulkbuster cool. Hulk was pretty cool, man. I remember we were waiting for Hulkbuster, and then finally they're bringing it out. And then the way he came in from the satellite, it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> I'm very happy right now. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. All right, number five. Um, last one. Mm. Okay. Jonathan, let me hear it. My number five, I'm going to go with the uh, Aquaman. It's, uh, again, Ooh, my whole list. One. That is, is nice. My whole list is, is drastic so changes excited. from the comic book series. So the, the I wouldn't say it's oh, drastic, oh, but yeah, hold it on. is super... Um, I don't know. It's a lot better for sure. When you compare this, old... okay. Oh, you're, you're, you're using the wrong suit. Which suit are you using for Aquaman the movie? The new one. The new. That's one. not the new. That's one. not the new one. That's Justice League Aquaman. Yeah. The new Aquaman suit, John, oh. blows your mind. Oh well. You haven't seen it. The okay. new Aquaman movie. Yeah, the brand. No, no, the, no, the, the trailer. trailer for it or picture for it or anything. I the think brand, I have. Brand new one. Let me look. Pull, up, pull it up while, while I'll do mine while you're All doing right. okay, while you pull it up. Oh man, I'm excited for you to see that. It's a good looking suit. It is. Everybody's going That's crazy. like, you're like being like uh, Frank right now it's with the adaptation, it, it, like it's, the same. Real accurate, accurate, but you're like, I never thought that suit could be accurate. Yeah. And then you see that suit and you're like, oh, no, they nailed it. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> John's like, no, no, no. I'll it off my list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me do mine real quick. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with uh, <laughs> Judge Dredd. Okay. Because first off, it was very accurate. Yeah. And I remember, to me, that, that suit's all about, of course, it's a helm and the shoulders. And the shoulders are very, because he's a judge and an enforcer, everything like that. Sylvester Stallone plays it perfectly. And I thought that they did a really good job of like pulling that character out of the comic book. The way the shoulders work, it's almost like World of Warcraft shoulders. They're way too big to be functional. Yeah. But when you see it on him and they actually have like, I think it's the eagle on one side. Mm-hmm. When you see them on them, you're like, this guy is like bigger than life. Commanding power. Yeah, he he really can stop anything. Those he, must be 50 pounds each. 
Yeah, they. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure they were. They, you know, should, they should like show a scene them. at some point where they use those. Maybe like they have to ram through a door or through a wall or something like that, and that's like oh, okay. That's why they got these big yeah. fifty pound weights on their shoulder because they can tear through stuff. Yeah, but and what I love funny. about the design of the shoulders is they feel very judgy. They're not so much the enforcer has half. Mm-hmm. They feel the way that they're these gold and stuff like that. They feel like the judge. Yeah. And and then with the helm too, the way it kind of like covers the the eyes. And with that red arc, it's almost villainous because the thing with the judges in the Judge Dredd franchise is they are villains to many people. Mm-hmm. You know, so that red almost is very like, you know, a villain would wear that. And then one last thing I want to say is the importance of his his costume is is so seen when they strip him of it. And you see Sylvester Stallone strip from it when he's okay, banished from the you, city. Which judge are we talking about? I'm talking about the Sylvester Stallone okay, myself. Because okay. that, that's the one in my childhood I love so okay. much. But when they strip him of it and they throw him out to the desert, mm-hmm. you see him. I mean, it's Sylvester Stallone. He's pretty built. But without those shoulders and without that helmet, he seems so much more frail. And like, oh my God, he's vulnerable now. And he, you know, how's he going to fight back from this? And I think it's the lack of that costume that did that. That ended up making Sylvester Stallone the frail guy that you're actually rooting for. Mm-hmm. When it's Sylvester Stallone, he's Rocky, you know, he's the yeah, big guy. Yeah. But that costume did that. Mm. So they, they built him up just so when they break him down, he looks more broken. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. That's that's good yeah. explanation. All right, now. So I'm going to go back to Aquaman. So now that I've looked up the newer picture, I have seen this costume. I, in my mind, I was thinking of the Justice League one, though, where he he's not wearing the top and it's all his tattoos. The colors it looks awesome. Down, yeah. yeah. Okay, so which one are you going so with? Bright. Um... I don't know. That's, I love the newest I'll, one. I'll, I'll, I'll defend the newest one because okay. he does. Okay, good. He does look really. <laughs> That's chance for I'm not gonna say right yeah, He does look really cool with it. I, I see. I gotta watch the. Well, this movie even out yet? Not yet. End of December. I haven't even. Seen, I don't we don't need to go to that because I'm really excited to see what they do with that. Actually. Because his his top is like fish scales, golden scales. Yeah. In the old cartoon, and maybe it was the same thing, but it looks like a fish net. Like he's wearing a net top, so like he's going to a gay bar. Which, <laughs> I'm like that's not cool at all. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It just it doesn't look. I don't know. Okay, let me help you out here. But, <laughs> okay. All right, give, okay. give him a help. So, okay, give, I'll give, stop the timer. I'm gonna restart it. Squeaks, help him out. This is like Frank's. What Frank Frank's been doing this whole time was making like, okay, how do we get Deadpool to look like Deadpool? I mean, look at it like, dang, that's Deadpool. Yeah. That Aquaman. You're not just like that's Aquaman. You're like, dang, that is a bad. Cool version of Aquaman. I'm trying yeah. to PG it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a cool version of Aquaman. Because when we first saw that, <laughs> mm-hmm. we were like, dang, okay, how are we going to make Aquaman look cool? So they came out with um, the the Justice colors. League. Yeah. Okay, so which we got Justice League, which is like, dang, he's yeah. really cool looking. Then when we got that outfit, we were like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I'd ever fall in love with that suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once I, once I saw that, I was like, man, I love how it does look fish scaly. I love the shine to it. Yeah. I love, like, didn't the comic book, it's been a while since I read Aquaman one, or he. The older ones where he had like the green underwear and then the legs were yellow too, or was yeah, it all I green? I think they, they were they were teal or something. Well, I think. They, yeah, I think they, they were, were both green, but it's like different shades. I want to say okay, because this I mean, one is straight, just like green pants all the yeah, way. All yeah, yeah. Um, and with the gloves like, and the, like, like the scale fin too. scales on it. Yeah, I just yeah. think this one looks gorgeous. I love even the actor. They changed the actor looks. So instead of having the clean cut um, guy with the short hair and stuff, we yeah, made him yeah. more rugged. Because yeah. I mean, you have to do something with Aquaman. Well, what's yeah. cool is so one thing I like. I'll just talk a little more on this too is the newer Aquaman, we're getting a little bit more of the outsider aspect to him. It was something that we didn't have. You, normally when you see Aquaman, you're just like, oh, he's part of the Justice League and he's got like the whole, he's already king. Mm-hmm. And in this one, we're really seeing his story from the, as the outside, the half-breed and stuff like that, fighting his way in. Um, is this what we're, cause, okay, is this, what are we mo- seeing in this movie? Because I thought... His um, return to his home. Yeah. Okay, I thought we were Justice seeing he was already there. in the king. No, he's in Justice League, he's an outsider. Okay. He, that's why yeah. he's kind of like hanging out at the fishing bars. That's and stuff right. Like that's that. right. That's right. Okay. So, and that was another thing too. That it's really interesting. They asked like, "Well, how are you guys going to direct this movie? It's going to be all underwater." And they're like, "Well, we just pretend like it's not underwater, and then we added the water effects." So I'm really excited to see how they do that. So like all the fights and stuff like that, they're like, "Yeah, we just kind of like every song will throw in like a water effect." Well, that's what I'm kind of hoping for because I I'm hoping not on Justice League. Where it's like, okay, they can't talk or do anything in the yeah, water, the, the and then they get this air people. bubble thing. Yeah, I was like, yeah. this looks, this is horrible if this is what it's going to be like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that you said that because, I mean, it's what it is. It's like when you watch Little Mermaid, I'm not going to like hold my breath and then they get a bubble scene and then they talk. You know? right. It has to be like Little Mermaid where everything's just um, you, you natural like, fluent. You, like, you want to almost forget you're underwater. And exactly. then you're like, something fantastical happens. Like, like, oh, that's exactly. right, we're underwater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's then another, there you go. And this Aquaman was in reaction to it, two things. First off, how well Wonder Woman did. Yeah. And secondly, how 
upset everybody was with how droll the colors were in the Justice League and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So like we need to punch up the colors. So that's why this movie, when you see like there's a battle scene that the way they're like in some old town, mm-hmm. looks awesome. It's just sunshine and white roofs. It's super cool. Or white buildings with red roofs. Yeah. And and then what the vibe I'm getting from it too, like there's a scene where they're like doing some Indiana Jones stuff. It reminds me so much of the remember the Brandon Fraser mummies. Yeah. Oh yeah, it kind of yeah. reminds me of those, and I love those movies. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited to see what they're gonna do with this. Are they gonna just make it an adventure movie? Or, mm. So I'm hoping they don't mess this up. I'm, I'm a little like nervous. Jason Momoa. So I'm a little see. nervous of the um, the scene where they jump out of an airplane and it's a desert. I'm like, okay, where are we going with this for Aquaman? Yeah. Well, yeah, you I liked how she pulled the about? water off of him to make to activate the artifact. You see that part? No, I'm just talking about no. Yeah, yeah, no. but they but they jump out of the Yeah, yeah. Well that's that's what I'm saying is it's kinda of like Mummy where it's like a little bit more of an adventure story and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it'd be inter- it'd be interesting to see where yeah. they go with this. Yeah. I'm I'm staying optimistic and I haven't been I optimistic too. in a DC movie in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I am too. You know, so it took a, a downward curve. Yeah, I mean, Wonder Woman was a wonderful surprise, but even going into that, I was like, this isn't going to be good. Cause it's and number two is kind of scaring me right now, that's all. Oh, no, they're going 80s. Anything 80s right now, I'm just like, well, sign me up, I'm down. Yeah, but the, I just don't see that girl with Cheetah. Oh, uh, Kristen that's Wiig. That's the one that's scaring me yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, Kristen Wiig. I, I'm not a fan of Kristen Wiig, but seeing her in that role, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, she might just be like too deranged or something. Yeah, they maybe Heath Ledger in this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, because you because she could like play she could play crazy yeah. really well. Yeah. So if they make her like crazy cat lady, like a, like in the old Catwoman, maybe yeah. it'd be good. Yeah, but his pleasure's not on a Saturday night level. He's bigger than that. Don't talk smack <laughs> about my Saturday night life. <laughs> All right, back on topic. We're okay. getting distracted yeah. today. All right, so automatically I'm gonna have to go Aquaman. Wow, <laughs> I'm even, not even gonna let you find it. Fight? No, I'm uh, sorry, I'm sorry, but check it out because Judge Dredd, bro. I picked you for the whole... Yeah, exactly. I picked you the whole time because of adaptations. And now we got... Or how similar they are. Yeah. So with this Aquaman, we got a similar, mine but improved. Is like a, mine's like a 3D printing for the But this is like... Im- this is improved. Uh, now I'm fighting. Uh, now fair, I'm fighting. Fair, fair, you, you fair. You judge this last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. John <laughs> judges last one. Yeah, yeah, so okay. yeah. So like, okay. <laughs> there Deadpool, you go. Deadpool looks like Deadpool. And then your Iron Man You don't want to do like that because I can get him on Judge Dredd. <laughs> Oh, loves- no, we'll yeah, do it. Twist it. Too. You're no, the judge of number no, five. Okay, okay. That's I'm that's putting my notes away. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so Aquaman versus so, Judge So let's go real, real, real fast. Yeah, we're we're, we're, we're okay, extending okay, okay. We're taking it at okay. the time. So this whole time, <laughs> we were going like what I've been saying this whole time. So now we got Aquaman to where, like, oh, yeah, that's Aquaman. But, man, that looks a lot better than what it used to be. Mm-hmm. So with Judge Dredd, you have what it the similar the similarities of it being the same. Yeah. Um, but this is just like we got him... Rugged, mean looking because uh, what uh, what's his name? The actor's name? Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. Yeah, he already looked like oh shit. He's like shoot. He's a dark version of Aquaman. It looks like especially when we had Justice League, we're like dang, he looks super cool now. Cal Drogo and water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now like with the shiny fish scale oh, yeah. suit <laughs> and his like fins on his gloves and everything, it's like man, this looks like the comic. But I'm actually like for this. Yeah. This is awesome looking. So does his costume provide him any special abilities, Not or protection, at all. or anything? Not at all. <laughs> is that how he it's, commands the scene? Well, it's the it it, it, it kind of does. It's, it's it's the suit of the of the first king. So it okay, actually so that's I mean, like wearing a crown. Or his father was one of the yeah. two. Yeah. So yeah. it is something to it. It is actually magical. It does have properties to it. Mm-hmm. But him swim. let's get to Judge Dredd. Okay, <laughs> so you got this city that's built upon upon itself. Where the lower is trash and the top is the rich. Mm-hmm. And so you got this guy who's supposed to be the judge and jury of everything. Mm-hmm. And an execution, of course. Mm-hmm. And so the ideas of the judge is, is they need to be imposing and he is imposing. That helmet makes him look like a just a bicycle gang leader uh, it mixed with you know some sort of super villain and then you got some shoulders that are super imposing and you got them walking down the, even even just the thinner of them all still look amazing you know like real big bulky then you got the bike that's part of the costume and there was this flying bike that's this big old bike that almost looks like a jet ski in the sky mm-hmm. and it's just everything about them is supposed to be imposing to, to strike fear on them because they go to the depths of the city to the bottom where everything's just the worst mm-hmm. and they need to be the scariest thing that's in there mm-hmm. And that's exactly what those suits do. It, it literally, it literally brings the fear to the people who bring fear. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's something that the comic books convey that the Judge Dredd can do that he was above the law and stuff like that. And and that's something that they they pulled out of the comic books and put right into the movie. And I think it did a really great job. We see Rob Snyder's in it. And, and Rob Snyder's almost us. He's the audience member. He's the kind of guy that's like sniveling and just hanging out. Mm-hmm. And I think that 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 only works when you have something that's so imposing. All the shots of Judge Dredd and when we first see him are from the bottom up, which make us feel Smart. underpowered. Yeah. yeah. And they're always from the bottom up. And and I think that's that's 
just again those shoulders really bring into it and then we see the strip down of that we see all that come down and then we're looking from slightly like like a like a 35 degree angle we're looking down on him when he's being stripped down mm. and that's the decloaking of that that's that's them stripping down and then his fight back in and we see you know so i think the costume really portrayed a lot of what is judge dread well so, you said that that's also like with the aquaman it's like okay Opposite though, not so scary. But when it's like shining and whatnot, that's like, oh, that's king. Mm-hmm. You know, the, sure, like sure. the brightness. Very I think regal. of him yeah. on the circle of life rock, sitting on sitting on top of the um, the throne on Game of Thrones. We gotta talk about with the that shininess. Uh-huh. Just saying, painting paint the scene for you. Yeah. But like yours, like yeah, yours is scary. It's supposed to be the scariest thing with the shiny one. It looks like okay, that's king. Yeah, brings hope. So, so with <laughs> with Judge Dredd, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's necessarily his the uniform that conveys the. The fear, the power that he, because like when Rob Schneider sees him, he is judge, jury, and executioner. So if you're if you see a cop on the street right away, you think, oh shoot, is my seatbelt on? Am I speeding? Something like that. Like you want to not be breaking the law because they can give you a ticket or whatever. If they could put you in prison or just execute you on the street, you're going to be a lot more afraid of that officer's power, the right. what they can do. So it, I don't think it's necessarily his uniform his uniform does make him look big and huge but there's also judge hershey is right with him who's but even she looks imposing but a lot smaller she doesn't have as big as shoulder pads she's he's the he's the he's the pinnacle pinnacle there's no doubt yeah but uh you know a a junior officer would be a lot less uh intimidating but the the idea of that uniform is to look intimidating even she looks more intimidating than she probably does without the uniform oh yeah, yeah definitely Definitely. So is there anything that the uniform does other than intimidate you? Well, Look, if the gun right. counts, then yeah, it make it marks every shot from what judge shot it, mm-hmm. which is really important because then you can like track like, oh, this bullet came from that judge. Mm-hmm. It can be manipulated with a clone, which... <laughs> As we find out in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it really this. It's hard to... I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard to fight against this Aquaman costume. It's really if you were making a new movie, how would you change the, the costume? Well, the new movie, they made a new movie with it, but... Yeah. But I, basically, I didn't like it as much as the old one, the costume. Really? Yeah. But, I mean, that, the idea is that. It is... You wouldn't change it much because you don't want... You want to make sure to... You wouldn't CGI any of it? It would still be the original? I think that would be the worst thing you could do. Okay. I don't think Judge yeah. Dredd deserves I CGI. Yeah. I think the idea is that Physical person, you need to have the gold shoulders mm-hmm. gleam against the light. And that's something that CGI has a hard time with. They have a hard time lighting. You need those shoulders to really gleam like a son of a gun. Yeah. And and because they need to be this thing that's taking up all the attention in the room down mm-hmm. in there, down in the slums. And I do like the the like art style of like what the eighties or seventies or whatever or nineties thought the future was gonna look like. It's a it's a real real Batman in, in uh um What's the city Batman's in? Gotham. Gotham. We're taking. We're losing so many credits today. Let's subscribe. Let's subscribe. Yeah, it's a real Gotham feel to it. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay. Um. All right, we gotta wrap this up, John. We're, yeah. we're really yeah. over time. I think I'm gonna have to go with Aquaman, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't need to. He is the king of the seas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right. Fair yeah. enough. That, you that put them side Aquaman by side. He looks. He it. looks pretty awesome. Yeah. Gleaming yeah. and shiny and. Uh, yeah. With his Triton. That commands power. Right but even there. at that, even the costumes of the other characters, like who would have thought um, uh, his villain, Black Mom? Black Manta? Manta. Black mm-hmm. Manta. Like, even like, okay, well, you're going to have a big fishbowl head, but then when you look at it, you're like, oh, dang, that's pretty cool. Oh, I know. <laughs> and that was one thing I was worried about, that one more than yeah. anything else. And it was like, oh, Mara looks awesome. uh, gorgeous. That's her name, right? Yeah. Mara? 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 Yeah. Or something like that? Anyways, mm-hmm. I, Again, I we are in so much trouble today. <laughs> I know. Oh, uh, even she looks gorgeous in yeah. her outfit and whatnot. Like, who plays her? Anyway. I forget her name. I know. I like the fake I, redhead. I hate that I know Jason Momoa's name, but not her, uh, yeah. you know. But... <laughs> I love the fake redheads. But yeah. Right. Um, but yeah. You want to count down what we're at five or uh, <laughs> yeah. well, five? All right, so number five, we have Aquaman. Number four, we have Joker. Number three, we have Batman. Number two, Thor, and one, Iron Man. That's a solid nice. honorable, mention, a honorable mention, I'm going to mention Spawn because I have to. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say awesome. Black Panther and Spider Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Black Panther was really good, and I like the, the accents of the purple when he got yeah. the Connected yeah. Avengers sword. That was really nice. I like the, the, I mean, it's probably very similar to the comic books, but Doctor Strange in the new movie. Oh, wow. I yeah, like Doctor Strange. Strange. Was not yeah. your list. That was cool. That's a good point, because I love Doctor Strange. Well, one thing really nice about Doctor Strange is that how well they did with the cape. It yeah. really showed its yeah. own personality. Yeah, yeah. Man. It's like, uh, it's good. I like the, almost like it, it's ragged looking, but it's all like 
It's all droopy, like his clothes, like they're all uh, big and everything. Just yeah. everything on him, I really just, like. Everything that. on yeah. him seems like it's ancient. Yeah, it's supposed to. Yeah, be. it's supposed like to that. all be ancient. All have a reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does look, cool. I have the wizard feel? I like yeah. that. I didn't even think about that. Hmm. That's all this. Real quick before we go, talking about adaptation. Did you guys see the Lion King trailer? Oh gosh, yeah. that was so good. I can't wait to see that now. Yeah, yeah. I saw it yesterday. I think I did it for the first release on Thanksgiving, right? That trailer? The trailer did, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you get it was during the football games? Did you mm. see that I sent you guys both the clip that compared by IGN? I oh, yeah, yeah, but I did. Watch the clip. When I saw it, when I saw the first trailer, I'm like, oh, okay, they're doing exactly the same. Mm. So basically, the trailer is shot for shot with the original That's intro. Cool. That's cool. So like even like the antelope looking up and the birds yeah. flying over, it's all shot for shot the same. Yeah. So that that was really cool. IGN That's posted up. it and I, I sent it to you guys. I hate IGN. And then, uh, <laughs> oh my god, if you follow our Twitter, you'll see a lot of IGN content. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another thing I want to shout out, uh, our numbers are starting to get pretty good. We're yeah. starting to we're starting to get up there a little bit. That's kind of nice. Voice. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Virginia. Our Virginia listeners have been with us since the beginning, and there's like a group of them that all listen. And um, and we're start, that's our that's our second highest state. California is number one, then Virginia uh, for our listeners. So just a shout out to our Virginia fans. Mm-hmm. Hit us up on Twitter and stuff like that. Thank you guys very much for listening. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the reviews. We appreciate the reviews. And uh, hit us up, hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Patreon. We got the Redbubble store and everything like that. So, but yeah, thank you guys very much for listening. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. All right, see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for listening to the top five. You can find us all over social media. We're on Facebook at the Top Five Podcast, on Twitter at the Top Five Cast. We've got a website, thetopfivepodcast.com. We've got Patreon and Redbubble. We'll have uh, those in the description. If you have any suggestions, hit us up on one of the social medias. Please give us a good rating on iTunes. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you later.